Hi, I'm Carly with Sofonsi, and today I'm going to teach you how to put an embroidery design on a dish towel. Just recently, Sofonsi released an embroidery and applique bundle. It has a bunch of really cute designs and also six fonts, a value of over $180, and it's only for $16.99, which is a great deal because I've spent $16.99 on some just one font before, so this is a really awesome deal. Uh, I'm going to be working with one of the designs from the bundle today. It's a really cute camper design. It says home is where you park it and it's from Creative Applique. Um, I, there's a lot of things that you could do with this design, but today I'm going to put it on a dish towel and show you how I go through the whole process of hooping it and um, stitching it out and then cleaning it up when we're done. So the first thing you're going to want to do is gather your supplies. So I got this really cute dish towel from Hobby Lobby is only $2.50. It's a nice, um, sturdy canvas material. Um, you can also get a plush dish towel. Um, this technique would be the same for any kind of towel. So I am using a Brother PE770 embroidery machine. It's a little bit of an older model. The new version of my machine is called the PE800, and it can sew as big as a five by seven um, design. So I have my 5x7 hoop and I like to use the grid that came inside of the hoop to figure out my placement on the garment or whatever item that I'm embroidering. So I have that. I also like to use a disappearing ink fabric marker. Um, you can get this at any craft store or on Amazon and this helps me figure out placement on the item that I'm embroidering. And I have a ruler and then next you need um, stabilizer. So because this is a, um, a towel and it's pretty sturdy, I'm going to be using tearaway stabilizer. And I'm actually only gonna hoop the stabilizer and I'm gonna just place the towel on top and so that it sticks properly, I'm also gonna use some uh, spray adhesive, temporary spray adhesive. Um, then lastly, um, when I'm done, getting the dish towel ready and on the hoop, I'm gonna cover it with some water soluble topper. And this, I use this on all my designs. Some people just use it on like plush towels and blankets, but it's um, it helps keep the threads above the item you're embroidering and keep them from sinking down into the towel or shirt. So I like to use it on all my product projects. I think it gives it a nice finish. Um, and then, the last thing you're gonna need, because this design has some pieces of applique in it, I'm gonna show you my trick to keeping the fabric um, from puckering um, after you wash the item, and that is uh, heat and bond light I put on the back of all of my applique fabric. And then lastly, the iron. So I think that's all you need to get started, so let me go ahead now and show you how to hoop the towel. One more thing I forgot to mention when gathering your supplies is because this is an applique project, of course you're going to need fabric um, for the pieces of applique. So I've decided to go with these um, three colors here for the camper and the door. And I'm just going to leave the window and the camper to be the same background of the dish towel. So the first thing you're going to want to do is I always like to pass an iron on items before I figure out placement and hooping. So because they have some little bit of wrinkles on here and some creases, I want to try and get those out. So okay, that should be good. Okay. Next you take the grid that came with whatever hoop you're working with and figure out where you want it on the towel. So I'm gonna want it a little bit from the bottom and then centered. So like if this was hanging on an oven door um, or even if you folded it in and only had this part of the towel showing, um, the design would be nice and centered. So I just use a tape measure to figure out the center. Now that I have my spot where I want to put the design, now I use the disappearing ink fabric marker and just the little circles that are cut out in this plastic grid, I just stick the marker right in there 
to make some little dots. And then I use a ruler to make some crosshairs. This marker will go away with water. It'll go away when you put it in the washing machine. Um, and then also I like to use a tie pin when I'm done to, to make sure that it's completely off. So now that we have our placement for our towel, I'm gonna set that aside. And now I'm gonna take the hoop that we're working with today. So I'm doing a five by seven. This particular design comes in both um, four by four and six by 10. So whatever kind of machine you're working with, if you have a smaller machine or if you have a bigger machine and have the capability of doing it larger, uh, the design comes in several sizes. So this knob here adjusts your hoop for the, how tight the inner hoop fits in it. So since I'm only using a piece of stabilizer, I have it set to be tight. So I'm just gonna take this stabilizer, I cut it to be bigger than the hoop so there's some overhang on all sides and then just place the hoop inside. And push it in and make sure that it is flush. So the stabilizer should be nice and taut and you can adjust the bottom if it needs to be tightened anymore. So now I take my grid, I place it back in to my hoop and I do the same thing again. I use my marker, I find my placement and make crosshairs. Next, use some uh, spray adhesive, some temporary spray adhesive, and spray um, the stabilizer. Uh, be careful not to do this around your machine. You don't want to get adhesive sprayed everywhere, so I have my machine on a totally different table, so I'm just going to spray right here. You can also stick this in, like, inside of a grocery bag, or if you have like a little cardboard box, so every time you spray, it kind of catches any overspray and keeps it from getting on anything. So, now we are ready to float the towel on the hoop. So, uh, just leave your hoop here, grab your dish towel, and then kind of lay it on top of the hoop. And then I take the two wide parts with my fingers here and kind of place it right where the dots are on my hoop, just looking by eye. And then I just follow my, uh, my marker is already gone away. Let me do this again. I think I have a newer marker. I think that one's starting to fade. There we go, that's better. need to throw away. This is my good one. Okay, so now I can see a little bit better. Um, just kind of use your fingers as place marks for the side dots and just push them right on top of the hoop and then lay it down and it should lay right on top of your placement marks. And just play around with it. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just get it as close as you can without driving yourself crazy. <laughs> and I could look here and see my line, and this line is on top, and this dot is lining up with this one, and I'll double check the top and make sure that this one is lining up nicely, and same with the sides. Okay, so once you get it, in the spot that you want, just kind of rub it so the spray adhesive. And then I have the water soluble topper. I just kind of place on top and then use some pins to pin it down. 
And if you notice where these dots are, that's your sewing field. That's all the places your needle can go. So I'm gonna place my pins outside of the sewing field so there's no chance that my embroidery machine needle will hit that on accident. And this helps further secure your dish towel to the hoop since you don't actually have it um, hooped. It's just floating on top of the spray adhesive. Okay, so now that we have the dish towel all um, hooped and ready to go, um, now we can go and place it on the machine. Now that we have our dish towel all hooped and ready to go, I've come over to the embroidery machine and um, loaded the design onto my um, embroidery machine on the USB stick. So the great thing about this design is that it's ready to go. You don't need any software to adjust or use or do anything to it. You can directly download it from SoFancy, put it on your USB stick, and insert it into your embroidery machine. Um, I do, however, have it pulled up on my computer um, so that I can visualize the design as I am stitching it out and know which steps come next. Because I'm working with an older model, I don't have a nice color screen on my machine, so that's where my laptop really helps me out. Um, also, I've pulled, I've decided what thread colors I want to use and pulled them all, and I have my fabrics for the applique and now it's just loading the hoop onto the machine and get started. The first thing I'm going to do is stitch out all of the placement stitches for all of the pieces of applique. Now that I'm done stitching all of the pieces of applique, I'm going to remove it from the machine, cut these jump stitches here with my scissors, and then I'm going to go cut some pieces of fabric that are going to be just big enough to go around each piece of applique, and then iron some heat and bond light on the back of the fabric. Okay, so I've loaded the dish towel back onto the machine. I cut the jump stitches and I also cut out the pieces of fabric for the applique and I ironed heat and bond light on the back of all the pieces and so then you just peel it off like this and now they're ready for the what we call the tack down stitch. So I'm just going to back up on my machine um, and go back to the tack down stitch of the tire. So that was placement. Here's the tack down. And just place the piece of fabric onto the placement stitch so where you can't see it anymore. And it also, it doesn't matter what color you're using for the placement and the tack down because all of this is going to get covered up in your um, satin stitch, which that's what that's where the colors will matter. So for the placement and tack down, I'm just using black and I covered up the tire, lower the presser foot, and now I can back up. Okay, so now it's ready. And if you have trouble with what, what just happened with, with me, um, another thing you can do is spray a little of the temporary adhesive on the back of the fabric, so then it shouldn't move if your um, embroidery arm moves and the piece moves with you. So, all right, let's try that again. And once it does a few stitches, then you can move your hands. Once it does those few stitches, then you can move your hands out of the way. And so then it's stitched the tire. So now I'm going to lift the presser foot up, take the hoop out, and use applique scissors to cut 
the fabric around the tack down stitch and just try and get as close as possible to the tack down stitch without uh, actually snipping any of the tack down stitches. So that is it. And then we just repeat this process for each of the applique steps. For the window, I'm going to just kind of poke it with my scissors until I can make like a little hole. And I'm trying to guide it to where it's just on top because I don't want to actually poke a hole through the dish towel itself. So this takes a little practice. If you don't feel comfortable doing this, the easiest thing to do would be to just applique a white piece of fabric on top of this red and so then you don't even have to worry about doing this but with a little bit of practice it is easy to figure out your layers and, and just feeling the layers so that I'm only cutting the applique fabric and I didn't poke through and get the towel. Now we are done with all of the applique and I am gonna finish all the satin stitches. Now that we are all done stitching the design, it's time to clean it up. So you may have noticed there were some times when the design was stitching out that I paused my machine by pressing the green arrow button and clipped some of the jump stitches, but there's still a lot of jump stitches um, in this design. So I'm just going to use my same little applique um, scissors to cut and clean all this up.
After you get all the, the jump stitches, um, next you can unpin the water soluble topper and just start tearing it away just like it would be kind of like tear away um, stabilizer. And I just kind of use my fingernails to pick at it and pull it off. Um, now, if you have any remnants left, this is all going to come off when you put your dish, wash, uh, your dish towel in the, the washing machine. So you don't have to worry so much about it. And if it does, if it's something that you want to get done right away, I also use a little spray um, water bottle and spray like this home font is a sketch stitch. So there's going to be a lot of topper um, underneath those sketch stitches and, and everything, but it comes right off. Um, if you don't feel like doing all this, just throw it in the wash, but I usually like to get it off when I'm done stitching. So you just spray the fabric good and then I just use an old um, towel to go and wipe the topper away. And then usually the water will get the placement marks out from my purple fabric marker, but if it's still there, you can use um, a tie pin and just go over those spots where you're still seeing some of your placement marker and then it will come right out. Okay, so now we've cleaned up the front. Now it's time to rip it off of the tearaway stabilizer. So you can literally just rip it right off. And now we can clean up the back. Usually I don't worry too much about the back of designs, but since this is um, not a shirt and it's a towel, I'll clean it up a little bit by clipping some of the threads in the back. You don't want to clip too much of the threads, and if you do clip the threads, don't clip so close to where it is and leave like a, a quarter inch um, of the thread above it. because it can come undone through the front if it gets snagged and, and compromise your stitches. So I usually just clip a little bit on the back and then if you really want to, you can go through and take out some more of the stabilizer. But this is the back of the towel, so nobody's gonna be looking at this side of it. But it's up to you if you want to clean it up a little bit, but if not, that is basically it. And the last thing I would do is because we used heat and bond light on the back of these pieces of applique fabric, I would press them down and you can use your heat press. Um, what comes in really handy is if you have a small iron, like the Cricut Easy Press. Um, or a little mini travel iron because then you can do it when it's still hooped and that helps if you do it before you do your satin stitches. But I'm just going to press this and I'm just using a piece of parchment paper on top to protect the stitches. your finished towel. So we are all done now with our dish towel and home is where you park it. I think it came out really cute. I hope this tutorial helped you learn a little bit about uh, floating onto hoops, um, how to do applique and just using your machine in general, going back and forth in between stitches. You don't always need to stitch it out in the order that the design says on your machine. You can go back and forth. Um, 
some other ideas that you can do with this particular design that I thought would be cute. So we did the dish towel today, but um, this would also be cute if you would buy just a simple wooden embroidery hoop and you can get these at Hobby Lobby. This is a 10 inch embroidery hoop. And actually I could hoop this if you just even kept it on this dish towel, like if you wanted something different but if you can find a canvas material like this and just stitch it out on the canvas material or use the dish towel itself, you can hoop it with the embroidery hoop. Oh, actually, no, you go this way with these hoops. But you could hoop it with a traditional wooden embroidery hoop when you're done and trim the access and then hang it on the wall. So that would be a cute project too. Um, another thing you can do with this design that I think would be cute for your camper is make a throw pillow. Whether you buy a already um, made pillow cover and just unzip it and float it on top a piece of tearaway stabilizer or just make the pillow yourself and sew it together when you're done, which you could also do with this dish towel. Um, that would be another use of this design. So go check out the new embroidery and applique bundle and see all the other cute designs that they have. And I will see y'all next time. Bye.